Welcome back. You're watching India Global with me, Gauri Devedi. Shifting focus now to Bangladesh and the latest coming in there is uh, that at the sidelines of the UNGA, Mohamed Yunus, who made his first trip to the UNGA as uh, the uh, interim advisor to the uh, advisor to the interim government did reach out and met uh, US President Joe Biden as well as former President Bill Clinton. Of course, uh, uh, there's also assurances coming in from America in terms of greater aid and also ensuring that uh, Mohammed Yunus has support of America at a time when he's promised reform, though he hasn't promised a path towards restoring democracy. How does that add up? What does it mean for India? Let's get and Mohammad Ghazali to fill us in with the very latest. Go ahead, Mohammad, tell us. So this meeting is very significant considering that Bangladesh has got a new government after the ouster of Sheikh Hasina, the former Prime Minister of Bangladesh, and how US has shown its interest in stabilizing democracy as well as providing aid for Bangladesh. Because you know, if you see all the neighboring countries, be it Maldives, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and even Bangladesh, until the economy stabilizes there, there is always an unrest or a chance of unrest being uh, created there. So Bangladesh's interim uh, advisor, uh, advisor of the interim government, Mr. Yunus, met with Mr. Biden. He also introduced those student protesters, so the leaders who led this protest against Sheikh Hasina, and perhaps Mr. Biden was was very impressed with the kind of protest led to the ouster of Sheikh Hasina from Bangladesh. But the key uh, center frame of this entire meeting was the aid. Uh, Mr. Yunus was promised that uh, United States will keep providing aid to Bangladesh to stabilize its economy, because until the economy stabilizes in Bangladesh, Mr. Yunus has a lot to do, because elections are still pending there. Uh, Mr. Yunus had also promised after taking over as the advisor of the interim government that he will see multiple and major reforms in the country after which he will go for elections. So, so to get those reforms, perhaps uh, the major reforms will is required in reviving the economy. Also, it also shows the kind of interest US is showing uh, after facing allegations that they were the ones who engineered Sheikh Hasina's ouster from Bangladesh. But now, uh, they are also uh, showing keen interest in stabilizing democracy there, providing aid to Bangladesh, and also uh, a very key US uh, State right. Department official, Mr. Donald Liu, had visited uh, uh, Bangladesh just earlier this month. So, a kind of prominence being given to Mr. Yunus, who is it's, it's first meeting uh, overseas trip for Mr. Yunus who has gone right. to the U.S. to attend the UNGA session and also met not only Mr. Biden but also uh, Bill Clinton. Yes, indeed. There were lots of uh, unsubstantiated claims that uh, it was America that was behind Sheikh Hasina's ouster. In the background of that, this meeting has taken place. Mama, thanks much for filling us in with all those uh, details. Uh, in fact, staying with Bangladesh, well, Mohammed Yunus has also made a statement about repatriation of Rohingyas. Remember, there are 1.2 million Rohingyas who are in Bangladesh, and it seems that one of the issues that uh, the uh, advisor right now needs to, wants to address is to have some sort of a permanent solution as far as repatriation of Rohingyas is concerned. Mohammed Yunus, who right after taking over as the advisor to the interim government in his first speech, did not say about Rohingyas being repatriated, and he's saying so right now. What has changed in the last five weeks is a question that we will ask. More importantly, is this a possible solution that can be uh, executed? What lies ahead? Security implications of 1.2 million Rohingyas being repatriated to neighboring countries, whether it is their security implication for India uh, and, of course, Thailand, besides, of course, for Bangladesh as well. All right, let's get in. My guest joining me this uh, evening on this um, debate. We have uh, Salim Samad as well as uh, we also have Shamsher Chaudhary joining us, who is a former Foreign Secretary, both joining us uh, from uh, Dhaka. In fact, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, let me start with you, sir. As things stand right now, this has been a simmering issue for several years now, not just for uh, Bangladesh, which is, of course, at the receiving end of a much larger amount of uh, uh, displaced Rohingya refugees, but also for India as well. Uh, and the fact that this is now being discussed at the highest level, Mohammed Yunus is now wanting to create some sort of a global diplomatic consensus around it. How do you see this? His comments at the UNGA. Thank you very much for including me in this uh, dialogue on a very, very important, uh, significant issue, not just for Bangladesh, mainly for Bangladesh, but also I think other neighboring countries. And you have very rightly mentioned India, Thailand, and even China, uh, they are also having a problem. You see, this is not the first time that the Rohingya crisis has been declared in 
a UN forum. It has been discussed before. There were statements and there were uh, proposed resolutions, which unfortunately were vetoed by China and some even in the case of Russia. Uh, I think uh, not just Professor Yunus, the rest of the world cannot under uh, or overemphasize the seriousness of this of this problem. And you rightly said 1.2 million. What you uh, could not add is it is 1.2 million and counting. There are thousands of children, babies being born every day, and that number is growing. Now, what uh, when Mr. Donald Lu was here, one of the things that uh, was discussed with uh, him and our foreign secretary, Mr. Jasimuddin, that we need to uh, be very concerned with the Rohingya crisis, and we need to look at the root causes of the Rohingya crisis. The root causes lies in Myanmar and the Myanmar military junta. But you know, seven years it's have gone it's by, not a single Rohingya has been repatriated. As I said, yeah, Bangladesh bears just, brunt of it, some of the other neighboring right. countries also, but not a single Rohingya has been repatriated back to Myanmar. It's been seven years. The reason why I'm asking you and saying this is because, you know, we need a plan in place. One is an aspiration, yeah. one is a goal, but second is the plan to execute such an aspiration. Where the plan, plan, everything lies in what happens inside Myanmar. Is Myanmar ready? Is Myanmar in a situation to take back even one Rohingya? They are not. The present military junta in Myanmar is not in a position to take back even one. And that's why this military junta is being uh, discarded not just by Bangladesh, but even by its ASEAN member countries. Many of the uh, you know meetings... Uh, of ASEAN countries, the Myanmar military leader is not invited because of the situation there. And now, the military junta actually, its writ is limited only to the capital and surrounding areas. It doesn't have control of large parts of Myanmar where different groups are now operating, armed groups are operating, seeking independence, seeking, uh, you know, not just not independence only, but also seeking separate autonomous status within a federal Myanmar. I was in Bangkok. Uh, Quite recently, I had talked to some very important, I was on a private visit though, but because I have some friends very high up in the military government, okay. uh, in the uh, Thai government, they said that unless, and I'm quoting, uh, I wouldn't name them, but I, they said unless there is a regime change and a federal Myanmar evolves, Rohingya will not be repatriated. So then because, is it is it a non-starter? Let me ask this to Salim Samad. Is this really a non-starter? Because, you know, uh, what, what Mohammed Yunus is trying to do is build some sort of a global diplomatic consensus on an issue where most parties feel the same. There is no divergent views. But the fact is, how does how does Bangladesh go about executing this at the time when when the prospect of executing such a plan looks fairly bleak? Thank you, Gauri, for having me on the show. First of all, it has to be understood that the Arakan army, the very armed group, has already taken over 80% of the Arakan province. So that is one of the reasons. And as has, uh, our predecessor has mentioned about uh, the, the government. So first of all, the Arakan, who, Arakan army as well as the military ruler in, in Myanmar has no capacity to have them return. First of all, the the UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, ha is totally responsible for the repatriation. And UNHCR has already mentioned with the Bangladesh government several times that unless Myanmar guarantees citizenship rights of the Rohingya, the freedom of movement, the access to livelihood, healthcare and education, which is totally banned, so you cannot send somebody who will not get education, healthcare, and blah, 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 work um, and movement, or even citizenship right. So they are nobody in that country. At least they are refugees in Bangladesh. But when they return to Bang Myanmar, Myanmar is already troubled, and Arakan army also doesn't want Arakan, the refugees from Bangladesh to be repatriated. They are also okay. having trouble so then let me... with the Rohingyas, even Bangl in Myanmar itself. Okay, that this is this is an important point, but let me let me tell you this. On the 18th of August, when Mr. Mohammed Yunus made his first major government policy address, 
and I'm quoting what he said regarding Rohingyas. He said that his government will continue to support the million plus Rohingyas, Rohingya people sheltered in Bangladesh. He says we need the sustained efforts of the international community, but we will continue to support. So I want to ask you this, that what has changed in the last one month from what uh, uh, he said when he, when he took over and said that he supports to now when he wants to build a consensus uh, as far as the repatriation of drawing gas is concerned. Is that is that a domestic concern and a domestic constituency that he's trying to address here? And hence he's making these well, statements. No, nothing has changed. I mean, if you look into what he has mentioned on as you has quoted and whatever he said at the UN, there's nothing, the policy has not changed. Bangladesh definitely had already welcomed this 1.2 million. So where are they going to throw? They cannot throw it in Bay Bengal. Number one. Number two is repatriation is an issue that has to be continuously a diplomatic effort that has right. to be undertaken by the global leaders. Yes. Obviously, okay. So let's quickly get in. Leaders. Let's quickly get in, Mr. Chaudhary, as well. I'm running out of time. Yes, sir. I just read out the statement that. <laughs> Ms. Uh, Mohammed Yunus made on the 18th of August and that we are of course debating the statement that he made at the UNGA yesterday. There is a slight difference in terms of the urgency regarding addressing the issue. Why do you think that urgency is there? I think the urgency is there because it is becoming almost unbearable for Bangladesh to continue to hold them. And the idea that why Professor Yunus is raising this is to keep on drawing global attention that this is a very, very, very serious issue. And unless there is a con uh, uh, effort by everyone involved, including India, including China, uh, you know, ASEAN countries, uh, Arab countries, everybody, uh, uh, we cannot keep on holding. It is a huge uh, burden on us economically. We did not welcome them. We gave them shelter because they were being pushed out of the country. They are disenfranchised in Myanmar. Even Aung San Suu Kyi, who holds the Nobel Peace Prize, she did not about it. She absolutely ignored the whole issue herself. Now that she has been thrown out by the government, she's not a factor anymore. It is the military who have to. So, but the fact remains that whether it's Professor Yunus today, somebody else tomorrow, previously okay. former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina also kept on referring this at the UN, that this has to be part of a global effort. Bangladesh okay. alone cannot do it. This is what yes. we are reiterating everywhere. Absolutely, 1.2 million people who can't return to their homes at a time when uh, they, at a time when Bangladesh itself, the host country right now, is facing tremendous economic, social, political turmoil, is the key question. What happens? Can a possible global consensus be built? Will Mr. Yunus have this as one of his lasting legacies? Is a question that we'll come back and address in coming days. But thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me in this edition of India Global. And with that, it's a wrap for me. Thanks for watching.